Hello and welcome. In this video we will be discussing the phylum Ciliophora. But before we do that, and because this is the first video in a series I will be doing, I will briefly talk about the kingdom itself, the kingdom Chromista, which Ciliophora is a part of, and I'll mention generally what protists are. Protists are basically eukaryotic organisms that are not plants, animals, or fungi. Some unicellular protists can exist in both salt, or brackish, and fresh water. The group contains both species that can be autotrophic or heterotrophic. Autotrophic meaning that they use the sunlight to create some of the molecules that they need for survival. Heterotrophic meaning that they take these molecules from, from other organisms. And most unicellular protists, at the very least, look something like these images I have here on the left. Of course, uh, these images are specifically those of the phylum Ciliophora. Now let's talk about the kingdom Chromista, which the Ciliophora phylum is a part of. Members of the kingdom Chromista are defined by the presence of certain types of plastids, which are small circular organelles. They are thought to have been inherited from some kind of red algae ancestor. These plastid organelles, uh, they serve many purposes depending on the species. For example, it can be used for photosynthesis. In that particular case, these plastids would have the presence of chlorophyll. So now that we got that out of the way, let's start talking about the actual phylum, Ciliophora. Species within this phylum are normally called ciliates. Now most of the organisms, the cell, is modified to produce a what's called a cytostome, or a mouth. Now the actual cytostome in the diagram below is located right about here. The food particles that the organism would absorb are funneled in by something called the gullet. The gullet is the actual groove here that's seen within or indented into the cell. After the food finds its way into the gullet and gets put through the cytostome, it forms what's called a food vacuole. The food vacuoles are then slowly digested and all of the waste products are excreted. They normally have cilia at some stage in their life cycle. The cilia may be simple and distributed uniformly over the cell, like we can see in this diagram right here. You see the cilia projecting all outwards, uniformly all around the cell. It gets a bit smaller during the top. The cilia can also be fused into something called a membranella. This usually happens on sessile species, so species that don't actively move around in their environment. So in this crude diagram I created, the membranella can be seen right here, that's sort of a mohawk. And below here, notice this is actually a stalk because it's normally common in sessile species, as I said. Cilia fused into these membranella are primarily feeding structures associated with the gullet and the cytostome. Normally, the membranella would be guiding food into the gullet so that it could enter the cytostome and become a food vacuole. Now, in addition to having simple cilia and membranella, cilia can also be used as legs to actually walk around on a substrate. To do this, they fuse into tufts known as cirri. As we can see in this diagram, the cirri are located all around the exterior here. And the membranella would actually look something similar to this thing, this long, long black streak of hair as you see here. Ciliates also characteristically possess at least two nuclei, a polyploid macronucleus and one or more diploid micronuclei, which are a lot more difficult to see in specimens, but they would look something similar to these small minor bumps you see here. Reproduction is asexual by means of transverse binary fission. And what I mean by this is sort of one cell uh, dividing sideways, essentially, or transverse, into two different cells. That's transverse binary fission. Or it can occur sexually by conjugation. During conjugation, the macronucleus, it breaks up and the micronuclei undergo meiosis. The haploid micronuclei are then exchanged between two conjugating individuals, one from each parent cell fusing to retain the diploid condition. Now that's about all the information we're going to be covering in this video. In the next video, I'll talk a bit more about conjugation and explain it more, a bit more properly. As usual, I hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll be seeing you in the next video.